Howdy everyone, welcome to the Common Connoisseurs. I'm Papa Popper and here's my buddy Ambrose today to help me build Balmore Battle Mage Captain. And uh, yeah, welcome, glad to have you here. Thank you for having me, I'm excited. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah, we've got a really fun commander here um, in Balmore, uh, Balmore Battle Mage Captain. Um, you can see on the screen there, this card is really rewarding you for casting instants and sorceries. Um, and it's going to grant all of our creatures an anthem as well as some evasion. And so I think when I had initially looked at this, um, there were a couple of things that stuck out to me. The mana cost being two, um, the toughness being three, the evasion granted to the creatures that you're, you're using this with, and then of course the evasion on the commander itself. Um, and so I started thinking about the deck, but, uh, I messaged you, Ambrose, and you said, yeah, I've already got 160 cards uh, already laid out here. So I thought, perfect. Well, let's get you on here and let's figure out how to get this to 100 cards. Um, when you first looked at this, what were your first thoughts about the kind of cards you wanted to play alongside of it? Um, <clears throat> I I mean, I was I think everybody thinks about prowess and that's kind of where <laughs> I um, went initially as well. Um, but I got very excited about it when I started looking at um, spells that are creatures, um, especially some of the token generators where mm -hmm. you're double dipping on building your board, but also antheming your existing board. Um, and I, that's one of my f favorite things about building 100 card decks is finding finding cards that are modal without like um actually being modal you know get yeah. that double-sided card that's 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 um because you're you're using it in a special way so um you know when i when, that's when i really got excited about the commander is when i saw some of the possibilities and and those creatures that are spells yeah yeah absolutely so you're talking about double dipping here right like we're not only buffing up the balmore uh and the team um, but we're also getting more of the things that are going to also benefit from those anthems. Um, so that's great. Some of the classics we have in here, like Dragon Fodder, Krenko's Command. Um, we have stuff like uh, the newer printed card, which is called Forbidden Friendship, which is the same thing, but better. It's actually making a, uh, a hasty dinosaur. Uh, the only thing is that the creature types are a little less relevant than the goblins, but in this deck, that is not really what we're going for. And then we've got a lot of the classic um got a lot of the classic is it blitz decks for uh the 60 card popper enjoyers out there we've got uh festival crasher we have the newly downshifted monastery swift spear which really hasn't actually had a cpdh deck for it yet um this is kind of the first one that i've really seen where i was excited to play it we've got classics like delver of secrets augur of bolus um and then we also have um kiln fiend of course and Kiln Fiend's bigger brother, uh, we have um, Nivik Cyclops. Um, so that's great. Some other ones that don't see play in 60 card, and you, you were talking about uh, sort of trying to find other cards when you're playing 100 card singleton that accomplish the same thing. Other cards that haven't seen play in 60 cards, so they haven't gotten attention that we are going to play here are cards like We Dragonauts, which give just, us just that- Just to <laughs> add in. Yeah. Like... <laughs> This was one of the the few times I was playing like standard was mm. when we when this set first came out, right? So like soft spot in my heart for for we dragonauts and yeah, just, yeah, love them. And when was this one printed? This was uh, let's see here, switch it was, printing. It was the first Ravnica block, but I think it was the second set of the first Ravnica block. Yeah, we have Guild Pack, Eternal Master, Guilds of Ravnica. Yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's an old one. So you packed, yeah. you actually did play that one in draft then. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. It was dope. I, this is great. And the fact that it had flying um, was was always appeal to, appealing to me from a brewing standpoint when I was thinking about what kind of cards do I want in my is it blitz decks? Is it blitz was kind of like my one of my first and favorite um, decks when I first started uh, playing popper. So it's really cool to see that here. The evasion is really relevant in this deck. Um, so yeah, so we've got cards like that. Um, another one that I've been excited to use that I haven't really found a home for or a ton of homes for is Goblin Wizardry. 
critting two prowess creatures on an instant is insane. Like, not only is mm -hmm. it instant speed, like end of turn, make two threats, but like, um, they're also going to get bigger when we cast spells uh, in two ways. Balmor is going to buff them and they're going to get buffed by everything else. So this is a house in this deck. It's very strong. Um, we have a couple of cards here too. And one of the things we're going to be doing is 167 cards. We really do need to winnow this down significantly. But currently we have a lot of cards that just generate value when they enter the battlefield. Um, and so there's a couple different angles here for the creatures. There's Prowess is one of them. Uh being tokens that are coming off of an instant or sorcery is the other one or creatures that have um some sort of value when they come in so that if they die then it doesn't matter and they don't even need to be aggressively statted because they're just going to get bigger so card like agro bullis could make its way into um so yeah uh we have what i'm noticing here is we have 17 counter spells and uh most of these would probably be fine in the deck but this is also like highly reactive um, yeah, we... and they're two mana. So <clears throat> part of me that thinks we could probably winnow this down a little bit. Um, I mean, I, 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 I am certain we can. And, and one of the things mm -hmm. that, that I, I, that we're going to want to talk about is like, yes, instants are inherently good, but one of the thing like, but we also want to be casting spells on our turn. On our turn, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, like, I think that for a blue red deck, this this one maybe isn't as beholden to instant speed as King yep. as as others are. Um, and so, seventeen is definitely way too many counter spells. Like, we we yep. want some, but that probably should be like eight. Yeah, I could see us like around that ten mark. Uh, being yeah. pretty comfortable because we actually we have more protection now um we just got the new card shore up was just added recently and this one notably does two things it uh buffs and it untaps um so the untapping probably not that relevant but the buffing is definitely relevant so um that was a good addition there um and so yeah we're going to be focusing probably more on this type stuff than we are on counter spells so this will probably stay the same um and actually, we're going to put uh, Confound under Counter Spells because this also counters spells that uh, target other people's creatures. So that one can go there. Uh, and then we have 25 removal spells. Um, and that is more than we're going to play. Uh, this could probably yep. go down to 10 or maybe a couple more, um, which means we're going to be Agreed. losing a lot of really good cards. And... I know I get I have a bit of a brain worm when it comes to uh, blue interaction in the form of like bouncing things uh, that I have to play blink of an eye boomerang echoing truth into the royal um, those cards almost always make it into my deck because they're flexible to bounce non land permanence um, however we're a deck that wants to cast a lot of spells and we want to do it like we're wanting to cast a lot of spells in a single turn, and these are going to limit us from doing that. So if we even just like ignored all of those two mana ones, right? And we just did that. We have Vapor 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All one mana, right? Um, so that's that's one, one thought I've had. And I, I was kind of thinking about that coming back to Ojai, uh, because Ojai is a deck where I was tempted to continue to run these more value spells these spells that are more flexible but then the reality is that you just really want like a lot of cheap spells so that you can flicker ojai all the time right, right. um so this will be something that i'm going to be curious to hear your thoughts on um and how many of these we want to be running um another section that's going to be interesting is the backgrounds uh these are cards that where there's probably a couple other homes for them in the, in the format uh, in the 99. Uh, this one is probably stoked on both of them, but they're not instants and sorceries and they don't generate immediate value. Um, so yeah, what were your thoughts on these when you first saw them? Starting with, uh, let's start with Tavern Brawler. Um, 
think they're garbage and they need to go. No, um, <laughs> I, 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 I honestly don't like them in this deck um, yeah. because they're not they're not double dipping. They're good cards that accrue value over time, but they're not really doing multiple things and they're not trick mm -hmm. and they're um, I, I think Tavern Brawler is definitely out because we want um, we want mostly cheaper spells anyways. Yep, yep. So we're not going to be top decking a sweet, you know, we're not going to be consistently hitting right. more than just casting a spell anyways. On average, right? it's going to be a one mana spell. Like yep. if we if, <laughs> like the funny thing about that, though, is the Tavern Brawler does does like that a little bit it, it there's two it, axes right because we can then play it yeah right so yeah. If, if tavern brawler yeah. is like hitting like uh in a racto stack say you hit first sphere garganta and you get plus six plus plus oh, uh well then you kind of almost feel like you have to cast that card and what if there's other things you want to be doing that turn right yeah. so this card actually doesn't reward you as much for bigger stuff because you're because you you may not want to cast it, but when you're playing cheaper stuff, then you're not getting as much of a pump. The other thing about Tavern Brawler is that it only works when Balmor is out, and um, yeah. and that's something that the the backgrounds all suffer from, except for one of them. So let's take this one off for a moment because look, Candle Keep Sage doesn't. It, it actually says of of all of them, it's the one that's saying if somebody kills Balmor, we're drawing a card. If we play Balmore again, we're drawing a card. And this one, this is probably the best background printed uh, in rarity, common or uncommon, because it's literally punishing our opponents for interacting with us and rewarding us for playing our commander, which is what we want to do in this format. <laughs> so this one is more interesting to me than that, because I do think that this card is almost Rhystic Study level powerful. Um, so yeah, what are, what are your thoughts on, on this one? How many times do you think we want to be casting Balmore in this game? That's a good question. So I think Balmore is probably going to die three, three times. Yeah. So um, we're not going to get a cast trigger off. We're not going to get a draw trigger the first time, right? No. Probably no. not. Um, but we could get an LTB and we could get an E. So LTB, ETB, LTB would be three. And then if we did it again, then that's like four, five-ish. So this is way above divination rate over the course of a game. Yeah. But, um, you know, and, and that might help us push through the finish line with that last player. But again, this is like kind of a grindy card in a deck that is, you know, we, we, are, an, we are an aggro deck. Yeah. yeah. So um, my inclination is no, mm -hmm. just because they're not instants and sorceries or creatures. Um, but yeah. like, I definitely get the, the value there yeah so let's uh let's just drop this in considering we have a lot of cards to cut so that's totally yeah. fine if that one isn't in our top pick um so let's start with our creatures here and i think we're going to start at the bottom of the mana curve uh Actually, because oh yeah yeah what do you think let's start with some of that removal the um, removal okay the, let's start with some of the removal and the counter spells because like great we know that those numbers are way too high yep yeah, yep yeah. uh, so which ones come to mind first when you're looking at the removal so I wanted to talk about uh, Pyroblast and Red Elemental Blast. These are also counter spells, so we're going to drop those They're in there. They're also counter spells. And so as removal, they're color hosers. And as counter spells, they're counter counter spells. Yep. Yep. So they're and basically dispel. I feel like they're like there's not very many situations where we can use those on our turn. Um, whereas a lot of the other instants could be used on our turn. Yep. So I feel like these lose the mode of buff our team because yeah. they're so niche. Well, Pyroblast doesn't. Um, Pyroblast is actually a really funny one because we can choose any thing as a target. Right, right. So this one, I think, might win out over that, over Red Elemental Blast, because what we're looking at here is that these are Vindicate for one mana. 
in the mm -hmm. context you're talking about, right? Right. We're right. trying to pump up our team. This is just like one man of vindicate on a blue thing. Um, yep. So Reb might not make the cut. I think. And I think that's a really reasonable, a really reasonable yep. take. But Pyroblast being able to just do it anyways with the yep. power level of the card probably stays. Right. Shall we do I'm that? Cool with that. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. And, um, and also for, for the listeners who are like pulling their hairs out right now, like our local meta is not nearly as blue saturated as I think a lot of other places are. Yeah. Yeah. And and actually I would I will reflect that from the tryhards right now, which is where a lot of the CPDH uh there's just a lot of games going down there right now. Um blue is uh is not as ubiquitous as it used to be. Um, right. we're seeing a, we're seeing a very balanced color pie. In fact, it'd be fun to look at this in another video, but, um, but like the meta representation right now is, 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 is looking quite balanced. Uh, the, the only color that sees a little bit less play, um, uh, is white. So, um, so yeah, I think that Reb and Pyro used to be like pretty mandatory because it was just like everybody was playing blue, but yeah. Um, so we've got a braid. This is one that sticks out a bit like a sore thumb to me. Um, I like being able to destroy artifacts, but I also just don't know how much we care. Yeah. Right. I, um, I mean, I don't I don't think that. PDH cares about artifacts as much as it cares about enchantments. And... Sure. And. There's a yeah. couple of good artifacts. We have uh, cranial plating, whisper silk cloak. Um, those are like the big ones that I can think of. Uh, that really do end games where it's like mm -hmm. nice to have an answer to them. Um, uh, Aether Spell Bomb is also and like Executioner's Capsule, but those are going to blow themselves up anyways. So it's right. like not as big of a deal. The other thing that you might find is a deck that wants to destroy Relic of Progenitus or Tormod Script so that they can combo off. Um, yeah, those are none of the things we're doing. So they yeah. they are gone. Uh, Demon Bolt. I think we can start kind of at the bottom here and work their way up. Um, I want to come back to this one, but like mm -hmm. Demon Bolt, what's your thought here? Um, I mean, Fertel's just good. It's good. Um, but are we ever like, I see us like playing creatures and casting cantrips, right? So it's yeah, like hard I, to imagine the Fortel. I agree. Cool. Mostly just because we've got a lot here. Yep. Um, Heated Debate, also fantastic card. Can't be yeah. countered. This is a great card. Also hits four. And then for, for those of you interested, it does hit Planeswalkers like Demon Bolt. So these are generally cards that I recommend for red decks. But again, three mana, right? Like, probably doesn't make the cut. Stagger Shock is one that we were looking at that's rather interesting. But this one is doing a couple of things different. This is actually hitting players if we want it to. And then it's rebounding. So if yeah. Balmore is out, we're triggering it. If any other prowess creature is out, we're triggering it. It's interesting, but it is three mana. I think the double spell cast is worth keeping around. Cool. Plus, like the fail state on fail state on the rebound is you dome somebody and buff your team. Yep. Um it's it's still good. Like if you don't have something to remove on your rebound, it's still good. So yeah. If we imagine that we have like Balmore and we have like uh like G2 Amplifier, and then we have like uh, Dragon Fodder of tokens in play and like an Augur of Bolas. This Stagger Shock is converting to like, like almost 13, 14 damage, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a huge, huge amount of damage. So I think we can kind of keep that I, in there. I'm willing to pay the extra mana for that because it's giving me two spells. Yep. Magmatic Sinkhole. Uh, ideally, this is one mana deal five, right? Yeah. We don't have a ton of competition in our graveyard or no. using the graveyard. There's, um, there's some stuff that counts instants and sorceries there. So how important those become might be something to consider. But I would lean on this. I would err on the side of keeping this until we're mm -hmm. really desperate. This is this is actually and the fun thing is we can actually do this. This is actually red. Mm. for the purpose of the deck fun yeah um so yeah there it is up there um okay sword coast serpent are we ever casting a seven mana creature the funny thing is is that this card just sits in exile and if you flood out you have this six six unblockable 
in a deck that protects its threats well. Yeah. So the fact that it's just a two mana bounce, it you know, it's it's not exceptional, right? It's like double the cost of like a vapor snag. Um, but and it doesn't hit non-land permanents, but maybe the serpent on the back is worth it. Um interesting. I, I can see a world where we need to cut it because of space. Yeah. Um, but like I want to I want to see if it can fit in there because I think sure. it's um and and it's it's a 6/6 six, six unblockable but it's also going to be buffed with everybody else yep. so e easily swinging for 9 or something oh, stupid. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for know? sure. Yeah, it's trivial to turn this thing on for its unblockability, so I'm pretty yeah. hype on it. There's a couple ones sticking out here Resculpt is interesting. Um this card is probably not removal in the deck. This is yeah. actually more like a like a replacement, like something they go to kill one of our things and we turn it into a 4-4. Four -four. Um, mm -hmm. But it does hit artifact, which is interesting, so we can mess with that. But I just don't know how many artifacts we care about. Like, I, And I don't think... I think the 4-4 could you know, kill it, us. It probably came in as removal, <laughs> but we don't want a 4-4 four -four on the board. So Nope. Uh, that one comes out. Lava Coil, 2-mana, Doom Blade, Sorcery Speed, Exile something. Um starting to look worse um yes but i still don't mind sorcery speed because that's when we want to be casting our spells anyways that's true that's true it's just not saving us if we need to interact at instant speed and we, all these yeah. other things do yeah. um which i think is appealing so i'm going to just drop this in considering for the time being because we are going to have to get this removal to like at least Fair. 15 right um or lower uh, okay, so we've got these ones here. We've got Runaway Together hits two different creatures. This can also be protection where we can hit our own thing and somebody else's. Um, that's not the mode that we're going to use that often with this, though. Like, like we could do it with Balmore. I could see that being useful because then we can next turn cast Balmore, cast a bunch of things, buff up the rest of our team, and they can go. So that's actually pretty good. Or it's hit two things from two different players, which is great. Um... How do you feel about this in comparison to Into the Royal, um, Echoing Truth, Boomerang, Blink of an Eye, that stuff? Um, I think I mean bo Boomerang's the staple. I think if we're having bounce, if we're we, any, we're starting there for our bounce spells. Um, it is double blue, and we are pip heavy. That's the only thing I'm a little concerned just, about. That's fair. Yeah. So let's just let's just uh, we'll go fast and loose with it. Boomerang's great for those for the. The listeners out there watching um boomerang hits lands and the relevance of that is mystic sanctuary during mystic sanctuary loops or um uh decks that want to load up their lands with enchantments like seed cradle witch satyr enchanter um there's uh the um even tiber saber tooth has an infinite mana line where you load up uh things onto there there's a couple of different decks that do that um so it also could bounce like an opal palace uh, that's not as useful unless you're going to discard it out of their hand um, with some sort of random discard effect but yeah hands of binding uh, this one's probably not going to make the cut nah nope yep that one's uh left over um you come to a river is interesting bouncing something also grants unblockability and a buff what are your thoughts here i think that on it man I, I i don't think the unblock i think you'd rather have the bounce than the unblockability yep and for this for that slot like i think we're going to be better off than with like into the royal or or um how often are we actually drawing cards on these though that's kind of what i'm wondering because yeah, in my experience it's like 20 percent of the time yeah it's really really low these look like they draw cards but they often don't so my temptation is to cut Blink of an Eye and Into the Royal and then keep You Come to a River. Because it just has this extra modality that that could be relevant. You know? How often? I mean, I, I, like, think about it with, like, a Nivix Cyclops. I, I don't think that in, our, in this deck, making a single creature unblockable is going to get more damage through than bouncing a creature. I think Kiln Fiend disagrees. Kiln Fiend, Nivix, Cyclops, uh, any of the prowess cards that are like Turbo Prowess, like U2 That's Amplifier, fair. those ones actually like that a lot. And I hadn't thought about that when I initially looked at the card, but that unblockability is actually very good there. 
Um, if we're thinking about tokens, the tokens don't matter, right? Like, okay, you're unblockable for three or four. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, what is it, right? So let's just, let's pull these ones into the royal blink of an eye. Um, you run away together is like a value spell, so we're at 15. Um, I think I'd rather have Echoing Truth than run away together. Yeah, so Echoing Truth is useful because it hits tokens. Um, yeah. So this is like a and, mini, this and is a sweeper. And also rats, right? Like, I think that I really don't like the rats player, and, <laughs> and having this against them is is great. Yeah, the so... rats player is a terrifying... If they're playing like Gary Rats, there's yeah. like a good chance that we could die to them. Um, so yeah, Echoing Truth is good. Run away together comes out then. Um, are we still holding on to Stagger Shock? Like, is this like better than those things? Let's look at our ones, our one manas. Uh, so we've got Fiery Impulse is one mana deal three almost always. Uh, yep. Flame Slash is one mana deal four. Frostbite's one mana deal three for snow permanence. Uh, Lightning Bolt. Yep, uh, magmatic spin coal. Yep. Light, lightning bolt is lightning bolt. Yeah, a uh, scred is uh, yeah deals damage equal to snow permanence. Probably pretty good too. And then yeah. strangle is one mana deal three. So, um, and of these, they're almost all one mana, which is good. Right, I like that. And then sapphire charm. Yeah, we haven't yeah, gone yeah. over this one. Uh, this one phases out a creature and opponent controls. So this is like a bounce spell, but. Um, but it's the other modes on it that make this card so damn good. Um, it's like draw a card, it's phase something out, or it's grant evasion, right? Um, and that could be really massive on a, like, oh, it's almost like a pseudo unblockability, right? Pretty high on that one. Um, yeah, so this is a good cut. We've made a good dent there. Why don't we move over to uh, creatures? Um, because we've got a bunch of expensive ones that we could probably cut right off the bat. Um, we've got uh, Tolarian Terror is a great card in this deck, so I'm not yeah. offering to cut this one necessarily. Um, but I just wanted to move down the line from there. We have Serpentine Curve for four. This thing probably like ends the game if we can like play it and protect it. Uh, it's just huge, right? This is another one of those places where like these unblockability effects are going to be dumb. You're like, you look at somebody and you're like, hit you for twenty. <laughs> dead like i mean no. with, with serpentine curve i don't even think that that matters because we're also giving it trample anyways oh good point that's a really like, good and point it's, and it's big enough and so the un the, same interesting with the terror actually right like interesting yeah yeah so that actually is a good point against the unblockability on you come to a river um mm -hmm. so that may be one that we could that we could cut um but yeah let's look at these creatures because we have 55 cards to cut and we have 44 creatures Usually decks oh, like this, you know. What's your? Oh, that's 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 the question. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask how many creatures do you do you want? Uh, yeah. So in um, this deck is gonna bend that that normal number a little bit uh, because a lot of the creatures that we're choosing to play because we are in a singleton deck are actually tokens. So um, here we are counting in this category uh, tokens uh, that come off of instants and sorceries because. We just want to know what our threat density is. Um, we can look down here to see that we have 55 instants and 29 sorceries. So usually in a, a, a spell slinger deck, you want to have like in a 60 card deck, you would do between 12 and 16 creatures, and you would have, you know, between like 18 and 20 lands, and you would have another 25 spells, uh, like 25 instants and sorceries. So that's kind of the math you would use for Delver is that you want to be flipping Delver around a little under half the time is kind of the way that ends up turning up. Um, and so in this deck, though, it's a little different because Balmore changes the dynamic. We're actually buffing up lots of creatures at once. So we actually love our forbidden friendships and our dragon fodders and all that stuff. So, um, so my temptation is to say, like, if we have cheap prowess creatures, we keep those because yeah. they're just good. Um, cheap token makers are going to be good. Um, but then anything that's like a more expensive prowess creature or just a purely value creature could probably also go. Um, so looking at the bottom here, a couple that stuck out were uh, Pyroceratops and Pyrehound. 
And then another one that's similar is actually Spellgorge or Weird. These are, uh, they do add counters and they trigger off non-creature spells, but we are almost all instants and sorceries. We have uh, exactly zero enchantments or one enchantment in this deck. So it's all instants and sorceries anyways. Um, the Pyrohound and the Pyroceratops both have Trample, but that doesn't matter. We already have Trample right. from Balmore and they're just two threes that have counters instead of stuff. So that could be good, but they're expensive. So I think these ones go, right? Yeah, I think we do keep the... I th think Spellgorger Weird is cheap enough that it's worth it. Spellgorger um, Weird. Right, that's the other one. Uh, actually, it's we don't three. have that one in the no, deck. No, it's in there. I just, we just saw it. We just saw it. Uh, but there's also... Actually, I just... Uh, what's the other one called? Um, it's a... Uh, it's a Weird. It, we, we missed one, is what I'm trying to say. Um, oops, sorry. It, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Type weird. CMC equals one. Isn't there one that that exiles spells? Oh, that's an uncommon. Yeah. Um, thinking of the uncommon one that untaps. Uh, so you said the spell gorge are weird. You said keep. I think so. Okay. Yeah. That, those counters stick around. We give it trample. That's that's very good. Yeah, I like that. That's definitely nice. Um, we have organ hoarder. I'm gonna cut that one. That's just a ETB. Go find a card. Three, two for four. Um, Goblin Wizardry is insane. Goblin War Party seems really good. The haste is relevant. It is expensive. Mm -hmm. It is an expensive way to grant haste and a buff. Um, so keeping that in mind. Uh, Seagate Oracle, cut that one. Uh, and then we have a bunch of three drops here. I think uh, three drops with just prowess is probably not good enough. Right, right. But these those two do have flying but we have trample right yeah so the more cre so i'm wondering actually if we want to like if the prowess creatures have to be extraordinarily efficient to be better than yeah okay so here's a way to look at it monastery swift spear is getting plus one for the prowess and plus one for balmar so yep. any one spell turns it into a three power creature if the same math was done for two dragon fodder, fodder tokens two goblin tokens it would be the same level of pump, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's just one creature, right? And it's prowess um, and it's expensive as opposed to cheap, then yeah, probably not so much. So maybe the Niblis of Dusk, Mistral Sinker, or these, well, that one generates value. So that's a little interesting. Um, so let's just try cutting these ones. We can always come back and add them if we want them later. Um, having flying is good, but Ingenious Scab, nope. Um, Bloodwater Entity is putting a spell back on top. How useful is that to us? I don't know. I mean... It's like card disadvantage in a way. It's not... It's not card disadvantage, it's just... It's like... Because it's coming, it's coming from your graveyard. So it's something that we probably um, want, I would assume. But yeah. It's but like it, dry, whatever your graveyard is. It's reclaim for an instant or sorcery. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think this one falls under the same category as the last ones, though. Is it's like it's it's just a it's just a two two flying with prowess. Yeah. For three, so drop that in considering for now. Bloodfire expert, same thing. Three power, three three mana card. Well, and I and I th I think that the really thing that kills that is the one toughness. Like one toughness is pretty brutal. Yeah. Man. Uh, this one is, yep, it's the same same area. Boot. Thermo Alchemist has Defender. Um, this card is generally good, but the fact that it's like not attacking is kind of an interesting thing. Um, yeah. It is, it is like attacking in a way because it's triggering off of all of our spells, but it doesn't actually attack. Um, it hits everybody, which is which is good. That I mean, might actually be the saving grace. It's 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 doing as much damage as any single creature. It's doing more damage more. than any single creature. Than, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. We want that. Two mana prowess, this is where it starts to probably get efficient enough to like make sense. But mm. this one does have one toughness. So keeping that in mind, um, it has a flick. Do you, do you value that at all? Uh, Afflict? Afflict? Um, and they've got trample, so I don't think they're gonna like block anyways. So mm -hmm. it's just a two mana. It's like majoring bully, but a little bit worse. Yep. 
Um, this is the worst of them, probably. Like, some of our all-stars, right, are like Kiln Fiend, these Flame Breather, E2 Amplifier. What about these ones? We have Can't Be Blocked if you cast an instant or a sorcery. That one's probably not good enough. Because we're getting Trample. It doesn't even have Prowess. This one's great. I really yeah. like this one. Yeah. Um, looting. Every time Plus, you hit. Uh, like, that That high t high toughness profile is better for what than the we low want toughness. to be doing anyways. Yeah. What about Just Guy Sage? When it dies, draw a card. Does that matter um, to us? It's only a 1-1. One, one, so this one's probably not good enough. I don't know. It's, it is prowess, though. It's getting the two mana prowess one yeah so it's doubling up so what is what's the what does this look like if we cast two spells in a turn which would be reasonable like hold up mana while casting two spells this is a five one trample mm -hmm. That's... Mm. no it's got three toughness at that point oh it's prowess so it's granting toughness as well oh boy yeah that's really good that's really good and it yeah. replaces itself. Like, it's a 5-3. They have to deal with it. I get a card. So you know what? All these ones that have prowess are probably good enough, too. That are two mana. That's, that's terrifying. And That's super scary. That's a lot be of damage. Cut this down. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. Jesse and Thief, every time you hit a player, draw a card. Is really strong. This is a Fidian Eye. Um, on a prowess creature. This seems like just good enough, right? Like, yeah. Cassius. So my my worry my worry with going really really creature heavy is that then we're then we're not having enough gas. Yeah. So like, I want to keep all these prowess creature prowess creatures because obviously they're so good for what we do. Yeah. Um, but like, it's gonna be tough. Um, let's let's go through some of these. This will this yeah. will probably get to like twenty or twenty five creatures. Yeah. So think about it this way. We have 25 creatures. Um, we have probably 35 lands. Is Yeah, that's what you have laid out. 35 lands, 25 we might creatures. might be able to cut that, though, depending on where our curve goes. We could, yeah, because um, we have a lot of cantrips, right? Um, mm -hmm. But so, yeah, 25 creatures, 35 lands. That's 50, uh, 60 cards. So 40 instants and sorceries. 10 of which will be removal spells, 30 or something else. So we probably need to get down to 20 creatures, actually. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of other ones. This one is not high on my list, uh, Fire Urchin, because we already get Trample. So um, yep. Um, we get Augur of Bolas is starting to look poo poo. Yeah. Satyr's Cunning is an interesting card, but I just never really, I don't know. Yeah, I think like it's a, it's a. One mana, one body. Right. I, I think we've got so much better. It's appealing because it's giving bodies and buffing at the same time. But yeah, like, and it's an escape is always good for. Card advantage reasons, but like it is the yep. effect isn't. I don't think the effect's good enough. Right. Okay, so now we're back up here. Um, Thorned Moloch has prowess. This one has prowess, basically. Uh, some of these, like, Dwarven Reinforcements, for example. Um, like, not as high on this now, I think. Um, yeah, I mean... It's a cool card, but it's, like, four mana, right? And I don't think that the foretell is actually working in our favor. Yeah, right, no. right. Because we're just we're we're wanting to cast. We, a lot we'd of spells. rather cast another spell yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, Empty the Warrens is even an interesting card. This is very good, right? But how much mana do we need to do with this, right? Or somebody else could be interacting with us too. It could be like we go to combat, cast a cantrip, somebody kills one of our creatures. Uh, end of turn, we empty the warrens and we have like, a, you know, and then we have like, uh, you know, six more tokens. So like the upside on right. this is I mean, I, th crazy. I think we only need to storm once for this to be worth it for what our deck's doing. So four creatures for four mana. Yeah, that's very above curve. I mean, like hordling outburst or it's at it's at rate for hordling outburst, but there's nothing that creates four bodies for four mana. 
So I think that I think and, that and, this is good. Yeah. Yeah. And and that and our with our commander out that damage potential, it, you know, it, it's classic go wide when that when that anthem effect hits. Like that represents a lot of damage. A lot more damage than it normally would. Yeah. Um totally. And and so like the, the upside when we hit six bodies is just gonna be absurd. If if we're happy with four, like six, eight is gonna be stupid. It's gonna be insane for sure. Um so war party is starting to look a little funky now. I like it. It's a lot of damage. Yeah, it's three's probably not good enough, even with another mode. And we're never entwining it, so seven mana is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Out. Um, so I'm starting. So, you know, when we're looking at these three mana cards here, like I'm starting to get the vibe that these aren't good enough because they're not turbo prowess and they're not making multiple bodies and they're three mana. So like much like the other ones, I don't know if these make it. Yeah, I mean we need to be cutting from this end of the list, so I yeah. think you're right. Yeah, we are we are at this end of the list, that's true. I mean we have uh, only we have 36 cards left to cut. We're doing a good job. Um so let's take a break from this and let's just switch over to what we'll, we'll do a little palette cleanser of cutting some of our draw effect because this is a really chunky section as well um impulse i think can go uh i like this card in combo decks i don't like it when i'm just trying to cantrip um when i'm just trying to like find more stuff right because mm -hmm. it's not specific cards that we're looking for necessarily yep, um agreed. uh we have um ray of erasure is a great card i don't think it's going to make the cut here um it's just that effect is so reactive it's useful yep. in a reactive context to mill something over the top of somebody's library. We have these peak effects. Do we like the peak effect? I've never really been a fan. Um, like I get, I, I get why you like it. Mm -hmm. um, yep. It's just a one mana instant speed cantrip, but it's, like- It's a lot better when you're also hanging out reactively. And we had some of that, but I don't think that, like that's not our plan A. Mm -mm. Nope. Um, I think that they can stay just for the moment because we have stuff at this end that we can get rid of. So yeah, like the whole yeah. the multiverse can go. Uh, Tragic lesson is for looping that can go. Winged words is great in this deck because Balmore is going to make this a two mana draw to. Deep analysis mm -hmm. is four mana. This is a card that um, unless we have a way to mill it easily is not going to be castable. So I'm going to yeah, cut that one. Scattered thoughts four mana can go. Gush is three. And in fact, oftentimes with our low land count, this is going to be helping us make another land drop, yep. which is which is good. Um, Treasure Cruise is one mana. So actually, let's just... <laughs> I love this little tool. This is a cheeky little tool that they have that I uh, haven't been using until recently. I think twice is, feels like a value spell. Like this feels like a card for grinding a little bit. The fact that it has two casts is what's really good on it. Um, but like, I'm not ever excited to pay three to draw a card or even two no. to draw a card. You know what I mean? Like both rates are like, are like worse um, than everything else in the deck. <laughs> right. They are, but. Two, two casts, man. We can, it, we can pull it. I know we've got, we've got more stuff in here that, that. Yep. Uh, timely interference is weird. I think this one's going to just go because we don't want to make things block. But there are mm -hmm. a couple of these ones that are interesting. The minus four, minus O. Oh, if you control wizard, draw a card. This is like pretty cool in this deck. Um, it's a bit reactive, which is strange. It's like something that we don't really want to be doing during combat unless we're like nerfing one of their... Well, it is actually. It means that we nerf their power and then our creature doesn't die. That's actually decent. Like minus yeah. four minus so turns most things into uh, a harmless frog. So like it's it's a it's a combat trick. Yeah. Um. But it. Uh, I guess my question is how much do we care and how, how much do we care? Are our bodies? They're probably pretty expendable. Yeah. Um. So I think that that might be an instance where this is like a cool card, but maybe it's just not. Um. Maybe it's just not cool enough. Um, yeah, 
All right. Um, all right. We're back at it after a brief bathroom break. Got some water. Um, so yeah, let's uh, sink our teeth into this once more. Um, we just finished up with the creatures here. We were looking at the draw spells. Um, oh, treasure cruise. We can change the mana cost here. Is there... Oh, we already have it at one. Look at that. Bingo. Huh. It isn't uh, moving it in the... Uh... Huh. Interesting. Um, cool. So oh, anything... It, it is moving it. That's where our one stops. Oh! That's really funny. <laughs> it is moving it. It's just T. It's alphabetical. Um, great. Uh, anything else that's sticking out to you? So so stream of unconsciousness is what we were just talking about, right? So this is probably. I think it's it's <sighs> I think it's cuter than it is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I uh, tend to agree. Uh, Chilling Trap is the same exact card. Except that it's not a wizard tribal. Um, mm -hmm. I have careful study in here because it sees two cards, but it is card disadvantage. What were your thoughts on that? Yeah, kill it. Okay, cool. Um, card disadvantage in aggro decks tends to be a really bad thing. So, yep. Um, Otherworldly Gaze. Uh, this card I put in there because it has two casts on it and because it is a lot of card selection, but it is card negative. It does look quite deep. But I don't know that we're like looking for a specific card. And the fact that it's putting things in the graveyard isn't exactly like the most useful thing for us. The other, I mean, theoretically, we have enough cantrips, though, that we cast this, cast our other cantrip. Draw get the, the card. spell we want, cast yep. it that turn. You know? And it is so, one mana. Like, uh, right. Uh, you um, know, the, the, the cool thing about Otherworld, the games, and I've played this card a bit. You've played it a little bit with my Esper Reanimator deck. Um, mm -hmm. And is that you can go cast this the first time, and then the second time around, upkeep. Cast it before you draw. Right. Which is very nice. So yeah. it's it's not half bad. It's just, you know, just an interesting consideration. I'm not you know, I think we I think we really are looking for like the cream at of the least crop here. Cantrips. <laughs> yeah, like and and um you know, normally I'm a card advantage over card selection person, yep. but but this deck really wants to be casting spells. And if if the only effect of our spell is um, plus one plus O oh to our team, that's yep. fine if it replaces itself. Yep. Um, well, this is going to bring us to another awkward card because it is doing something we actively want um, similarly, but it is card disadvantage, and that is Faithless Salvaging. This has rebound. We were just talking about how good rebound is because yeah. we're actually not investing mana in the second cast, which is different from Otherworldly Gaze because Otherworldly Gaze is actually taking mana to cast every time to get the trigger. And I, we I want to I want to leave this in because I want to see it in play. I think because rebounds I think, nuts. <laughs> yep. I and I think that there's a phase in this game where we're discarding irrelevant creep like we have a board so we're discarding irrelevant creatures we're discarding irrelevant lands and um pumping our team like late game i think this gets very very good yeah yeah i agree and we're gonna have lands that's the mm -hmm. thing is like looting is actually okay on this deck because when we get to that so uh, we could look at it this way any time that is not the beginning of the game looting is going to be good right um I see this in Sailor's Bane all the time with careful study where it's like, I don't really like it early because I have to pitch spells. But late game, I draw it and I'm like, oh, let's go. Like pitch these extra lands I've got. I don't need them. I want spells. So that is actually where careful study might be okay for this deck. Right? Yep. So let's actually, um, we're not really in a spot to be adding cards, but we're going to just pretend that we never cut it um, for the same reason. We've got Galvanic Relay. How many do we have to cast for this to be good? And we can't cast them this turn, we cast them next turn, which sets us up. I worry that this puts a bit of a bullseye on our back, right? Like we cast... It does. You know, and it's three mana. Um, it's three mana. I think this is my intuition is saying this one doesn't actually make the cut. 
that's where I'm at, which is crazy because it's a phenomenal card, right? But like, it's it's big action is a turn after we cast it, and the turn we cast it, we're not putting as much pressure on because it's only the one. And yeah, I'm not not a big fan there. We have slip through space, shadow rift. Um, these are just cantrips, which is great. Uh, we have shadow and can't be blocked, and they're. But I think. I think cantrip with can't be blocked um, is good. And actually yeah, looking at I our so evasion too. section really quick, um, I think we're, mi evasion... we're missing some stuff. Uh... Yeah, but evasion that doesn't repl I don't think evasion that doesn't replace itself. Yeah. Like everything we have there right now draws a card or has two casts. Yeah, yeah, which is huge. Yeah. Like I could see a turn where you go like artful dodge, artful dodge. This card just represented 10 damage. And uh, uh, and two of the creatures that are going to be attacking can't be blocked now. Very yep. strong. Very strong. And Distortion Strike is even more stupid. Like, this one is plus one, plus oh, and unblockable. Oh, my God. Over two turns. Yeah. Yep. Strong. So I, I, I'm not... Yeah, I think that evasion is situational, and it's going to be a couple of precision evasions is really all we need to, to win a game. Yep. Um, and so these are... These are keeping fuel going either yep. through copies or through card draw while they're doing that effect. Yeah. And I think that's that's what we want from that effect. Cool. So this is looking really good here. I don't actually mind. I think these peak effects are are going to be useful mm. and they're cantrips and they're instants, you know? So and we have to cut counter spells and we have to cut a couple of other things too, so I'm yeah, I'd like to keep those for the time being. Sure. Um, let's so we actually have we have a couple tutors on here. Yeah, I'm not sure we actually need any of those. I don't think we need these. I think muddle the mixture could be um, a, just a good counter spell, but yeah, right. we have to we have to look and see. Um, yeah. I think the one that immediately sticks out like a sore thumb is lose focus because this card is we're not we don't want to cast this. We don't want to cast a three mana counter spell like no and three mana counter spell is slightly better than uh than than um mana leak but for three mana it's worse so this has got a different purpose for a different deck so we cut that uh lofty denial is actively insane uh logic knots very good mana leak is very good memory lapse is not a card i'm super high on in a deck like this because i don't we're not pulling off a combo this card is great when uh you're going to combo and it doesn't matter that the card that you're countering is going on top of their library. So it is, no. a, it is a colorless blue counter spell. I mean, I, we, we do have, we, we have better options. So it's, it's yeah. Like yeah. if we don't want them to get removal, right? Well then this is card disadvantage because they are actually going to use it on our commander next time they draw it. Right. Right. Um, prohibit and negate are good. Um, we have days in here. What did you feel about days? This is free. This is sometimes going to be dead in hand and other times it's going to be absolutely backbreaking, which is classic days. Like, I mean, I think that we want to tap out enough that this is worth having. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. yeah. Like if we go turn to this thing with the days in hand and somebody spends their turn being like cast down and we daze it. Ooh, chef's kiss. Yeah. Um, confound. Draws a card, counters other people's stuff as well as countering stuff that targets us or our creatures. Um, I think we like it because of cantrips. Yeah. Yep. And it's actually colorless blue, which is good. Spell Pierce seems great. Pyro, intervene, disrupt. What did you think about this one? Disrupt. Um. Noteworthy that this card also can just draw a card off of somebody else's instant or sorcery if we don't feel like we're going to have a target for it. Or your own. Or your own. Can you do your yep. own? Yep. Yeah. You cast a spell, hold it priority. It. Yeah, it's one mana. Um, it's basically four spike with draw a card on it. It's it's very strong in the right use. Um, is it charm is great for this deck. I forgot that this actually goes under removal too. <laughs> it's like two damage mm -hmm. to a creature. God, that was a great downshift. Wow. Yep. Uh, so this is okay, looking so a we little do, we, thick we do still. need to yeah we need to kill some stuff so what is what is our what is our priority in terms of counter spell 
muddle. Like what, are we, what do we? Re, what do we? What spells do we want to counter spell? Mainly and, removal and crypt rats, pest, crypt yeah. rats, pestilence, like sweepers, breath weapon. Yeah, I, I like. I think the sweepers are scarier than any spot removal. Interesting. So muddle is actually better because of that. So prohibit would go then. Because prohibits not gonna, it's gonna take four to counter any of those, mm -hmm. but it can. That is one thing to keep in mind. Metal the mixture can't counter uh, crypt rats or pestilence or pestilence. Yeah, I think. But it does. Like it's gonna get the other sweepers. Huh. But I don't. I don't think we're ever transmuting it, and it's double blue. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Muddle ghost. Um. Because all these other ones are super flexible, right? Right. Um, Confound might not make it. Like this isn't doing anything yeah. for sweepers. So let's um, let's uh, can we pause and look at our other protection? Yeah, these are all great. One mana hexproof plus something else. Uh, Mizium yeah, skin. Mizium nope. skin. Mizium skin only gives plus one or plus oh plus one to our whole team if we want. Um, which could be useful against suffocating fumes or something, but like that card doesn't really see a lot of play right now. It's going to start seeing more play. These are all good cards, though. Like we land a Cloud of the Dominus on Balmore, and the game's going to get really hairy for our opponents really quick. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know that we ever cut these. These are like staple. Right? Yeah. Um, Did we miss any? Probably. <laughs> Uh, there's Dive Down, Museum Skin. Um, I don't think we did. No, we didn't. Spell Shield is only uh, if you kick it. So yeah, we're good. Uh, there are Shroud cards. Ooh, you know what? Yeah. Um, Alexi's Cloak. That would be really good in this deck. Anytime you can play an instant, no longer can be targeted. But it's but it's but it's not an instant. It's not. You're right. It is not a pump spell. But is this something where it's good enough that we would just play it anyways? Almost like Wither Bloom being like, we'll play Whisper Silk Cloak because it's just that good in the well, deck. I don't think so. We have tons of options for mm -hmm. protection that are also instants, including counter spells. Right. Like. Right. Um, we could play. This is this is that that is that is. Um, uh, 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 that's intervene that doesn't pump our that doesn't pump our right our crew but it does have the difference that it sticks around forever our opponents aren't going to stick around forever because we're buffing our crew that's true that's a good point there's also mage's guile which is an interesting card can't be the target of spells or abilities so it's it's um it's a shroud and then it also <laughs> has cycling on it um that's it's interesting and it's actually target creature. So this is actually stave off as well. Uh, there's also Veil of Secrecy, which grants unblockability and shroud. Those, uh, yeah. This one actually is more attractive. We'll just put them in considering right now. We have the best ones. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I think. Okay. So 19 cards. Oh, boy. I feel like we need to cut these counter spells down a bit. Which yeah, ones we, suck? We're shooting for like 10 of these. Prohibit right? like... sucks. I think 10. Yeah. But so we have we have 10 plus the five protection spells, right? So it's like. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And this removal needs to probably be about 10 as well. <laughs> um, so like uh, run away together probably comes out stagger shock is starting to look like yeah i think we have to i'm i'm wondering about the serpent too yeah yeah like i like it but um but like everything else though <laughs> um yeah i think i think we're not we're not actually casting it as a serpent enough it's going to be so rare yeah okay that was a good that was a good chunk there um, all right, let's go back to the creatures here. Are any of these poo-poo? 
any of these i mean we are really at the sort of creme de la creme here jesse and thief it only takes one spell for this to become three power and then it's on rate <laughs> but it is drawing cards and i really like that yeah i really like that i think this is good enough uh, the cards that we're never ever cutting are Nivix, Weed Dragonauts, Thermo, uh, Kiln Fiend, Kessig Flame Breather, Amplifier, Firebrand Archer, Festival Crasher, Monastery Swift Spear Delver. We have a lot of stuff in between that could. Yeah. Uh, I don't. So I also let's don't, revisit our I mean, big snakes. <laughs> I mean, Tolari and Terra seems stupid. Like it's Ward Two. Like if this is this yeah. is a one mana ward too, right? Like we should change the mana cost on this thing. Let's let, let's be real. This is, this is only ever one mana. This is Gurmag Angler. So here's here's my. I, I guess I don't know how fast this deck is going to come out of the gate. So after we do some testing, like we might. I think we're I think we're gonna have to reconfigure this, right? Yeah. Because if we... it's if it's very fast, then this snake isn't actually going to be good because we're not we're going to be ending the game yeah. before it gets to that point. Yeah. But if but if it is if it does being a little bit more like mid rangey, then that snake is going to be amazing and we're going to want to angle more towards that type of spell. Um can we cut confound by the way. It's like yeah, yeah, we should. Sure. I hate that cuz I really like that card, but I just often um, <clears throat> find myself cutting I, it. I also wonder if like um if like disrupt and days aren't I, good enough i mean to... like truthfully pyro is even i mean the cool I mean, thing <laughs> yeah that's like, what i was saying like it's... yeah i mean pyro is so good but it's also the, if... i think the saving grace is we can always cast it that's the thing we can always cast it to pump the team yeah. Yeah. This is just one mana. Your team gets plus one, plus oh, and trample. Um, but, but if that's all I'm getting, I want to be drawing a spell too. Or drawing a. If that's all I'm getting, I want to. I want it to cantrip, and this doesn't cantrip. But it, but it, it isn't all we're modes. getting, right? It, yeah. It, it has the other modes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think this is not one that I would be first on the chopping block, for me. Um, I don't know. It's a tough one. A tough one we are really into like the very best cards right now um what about these haste cards we haven't talked about that at all haste oh, is yeah. good they're all drawing cards basically uh or they have multiple casts so crimson wisps maximize velocity um there's another card that grants haste that draws a card too right there's one uh, there's one yeah. other one expedite yeah, expedite. We want that, and I, I think we want we that. Have... We want that more than we want the ability to uh, cast it again, right? Well, maybe not. I think so. No, I think so. I don't. I think reckless charge is also interesting. The fact that I mean, we get trample is fucking crazy in this deck, right? Like reckless charge <laughs> is sweet. Right? Yeah, reckless charge is minimum plus four to your power. You have trample, and <laughs> like, if we happen to cast that creature this turn, God forbid, it's also prowess, right? Like, yeah. Imagine what if, you what if, like. What if you go Cyclops into reckless charge with I, your commander out and just? I mean, reckless charge, uh, Nivix Cyclops, reckless charge, team or battle rage is 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 lethal. We don't on have on to in sixty cards. Rage. We, we, we need to put battle rage in here. <laughs> oh no! Don't do this. Um, what about assault strobe then? Uh, no. Okay, so I don't. I don't actually think double strike is in. Should we be like? I, I don't double know, strike deal, is broken. Our deal actually. game plan is where no, but like we're we're gonna be attacking with things early. Life totals will be down. We don't need to double strike to get somebody dead, right? Because they're not gonna be at twenty. They're gonna be at ten. But it's one mana. Oh my god. Right. Like imagine this on any of like. Oh shit! We even forgot this one too. Double strike if there are three more instants and sorceries in the graveyard. <laughs> 
it's just that uh, it's pretty it's pretty all right it's pretty fucked up actually <laughs> um oh god there's so, so many of them so battle rage is actually bad because we already have trample we already have trample assault strobe good yeah psychotic fury can draw a card off of Balmore. We the problem i have with that is that i don't like drawing in more attention there shouldn't be more yeah. reason to kill Balmore, and this this does that we don't like that raking claws is cycles but we want these spells we want to double strike our shit like right. i don't want to ever cycle that um okay I so think, it's, it's only a salt i think stroke. that's yeah i think that's it okay and, and then spell eater wolverine. wolverine yeah wolverines are my favorite animal too so if we could find space for this i would appreciate that ambrose okay hurt. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna communicate extra that passively where, aggressively that about where, that that might be where you're in my versions of the deck diverge we'll yeah. see <laughs> Oh, I, I don't so, know. Th th this is this is again like if the deck is very fast, the double strike is going to be overkill. Yeah. So like, let, let's think about what this looks like. If we cast two spells, this guy's hitting for ten. Yeah, that's a that's a bit. That's a lot. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> okay, we're back to removal though. Like this is probably mm -hmm. too many. Um, I think Pyroblast needs to go. Look, I wanted right, to remove it right, from. All right. Yep. <laughs> um how many things are using our graveyard now with treasure cruise sinkhole um serpent serpent doesn't use it it just looks no at the it. other serpent uh sorry it's not actually a serpent it's the, the this does not thing. use them either it just it just looks at them sure but it does look oh, at them. oh 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 so we don't want to use it up yeah let's get rid of that bye bye mm-hmm uh, Does that yeah. mean we want to kill Treasure Cruise, or is Treasure Cruise just too? Oh no, never! No, 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 yeah. no, no. Okay. Yeah, we we were. I think we're okay with that tension. Damn, Double Strike is broken in this deck. What? what okay. Um, what were the other Double Strike creatures? Are any of them two mana? No. No. Sag. Watsy doesn't think Double Strike should be on two mana creatures. Okay. At um, common. At common. That's true. Yeah. And they also don't they also don't think that double strike should be on equipment. Um, which I would like to see them change. I think that would be really dope. Um, never been problematic. It's fine. It's never ever been problematic. <laughs> yeah, Ember Cleave was not a problem. <clears throat> I'm saying that um... one hundred percent tongue in cheek, but uh Okay, we still have a little ways to go. We need to get this to 10 and this to 10, I think. I think you come to a river as our next boot. Ooh, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Um, boy, if Pestilence resolves, we are weeping. We have no way to really deal with that if it resolves. That's okay, though. That's fine. Yeah. It shouldn't resolve. Nobody should let that happen. <laughs> um uh, okay. So yeah, the creatures here, is there anything that sucks? Like like Krenko's command is better than this because this right here is uh two things. So they they have to kill two things. Not one. Yeah. Right? This one. And like Hordling Outburst being three, is that? It's three for three bodies. That's really good, I, right? This is triggering. Right. And it and it's a pump. So it's a like, pump. We want we want that. So we're actually sure. looking at like this one looks like the worst of the prowess ones. I think the eternal is worse than that. I think they're both bad. Okay. Just guy elder draws cards, which is good. Jesse and thief draws cards, which is good. Now we're on to like majoring bully. If we got this to 20, I think that's a healthy spot. One fifth of the deck is creatures. 
Um, so 20 creatures, 30-ish, 30 30-some 30 lands is like 50% spells. So that's pretty good. Um, so what about like Mage Ring Bully, Lightning Visionary? Maybe. Yeah. I'm actually worried about getting down to 20 creatures versus like 25. Yeah, um, we'll have to see when we do some play testing, like how that works. If we do want more, we'll know exactly where to come. Yeah. Right? Because there's some good stuff in here. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, let's, Great. Let's kill some more counter spells. Um, like two? Like, I don't even know which ones we're cutting at this point. Like, disrupt, I guess. But it's just that, that cheap interaction is so good logic knot is consuming our graveyard so we have logic yeah. knot and we logic knots like great though right like this is counter anything um i don't know that there's anything here i want to cut except like i could see maybe disrupt because it is just inconsistent right um, i think disrupts disrupts the next one yeah okay Good. Uh, but I, so, but I, but I really think with twelve counter spells and also five protection spells, like that feels maybe too reactive. Substantially too reactive. Okay. Well, maybe this is actually the one that we want. Then, if we're keeping them, maybe, maybe logic knot. Like, which of these do you like the least? Let's put it that way. We don't really care about creatures, so negate. Be, being one colorless, colorless blue is good. Mana leak uh -huh. is the same way. Logic yeah. knot is blue blue. Deprive is blue blue. Counter spell is yeah, blue let's, blue. I yeah, let's let's kill logic knot. Okay. Um Deprive could be useful in low land count situations. Yeah. The pips but is the pips is, is something is just like it is just counter anything though. It's pretty good, but again, we're yeah. So actually, what if we just said? I mean, it's kind of crazy, but counterspell and deprive. Maybe. Okay, let's slaughter some sacred cows. I mean, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, you and I are all about the heresy. Let's go. Big, big heresy. Big heresy. Um, big heresy energy. And okay, with that in mind, I think. So we have 10, 10, 5. Um, we might be looking at maybe the worst ones in here, like Serum Visions. I just like these because, well, I mean, they're just good cards. <laughs> yeah. Got us. Uh, like Assault Strobe. It, I just like, it, I, I'm having a hard time imagining that we cut this because there are literally... Uh, look, it's it's one. It's, it's Gitaxian probe and peak. Gitaxian probe? Are you, dude? You're, you're yes. You're, no, this is free. This is free. Pump the whole board. Draw a card. Peak though. Peak and clairvoyance. But not Gitaxian probe. I do not. I do not like that idea. What about? Triple? I don't think the. I don't think it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Getting that, getting that extra pump in there is probably gonna like be enough. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a uh, careful study. The reality is, like, when people say that I don't want to play this card because it's bad in my opening hand, the reality is that um, is that most of the time things aren't in your opening hand. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I like it actually. Um, we don't even have a category for this. Um, it is its own category. Is it's, it's its own category. I mean, this thing ends the game with like one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven of our different creatures of our creatures. 
So like a lot of them. Okay, what about uh what about Faithless Salvaging again? I like that more than careful study. Yep, two casts. Instant speed is also not nothing. Yeah. Ooh, this is we care about brutal. brainstorm. <laughs> Do we care about brainstorm? Um So we are very pip intensive, which means that we're actually more likely to run dual lands than we are to run fetch lands. <laughs> Just want to make sure something here. Um, I get expedite under draw, crimson wisps under draw. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, that tells us actually how many draw spells we have, right? Right. Um, in fact, is a charm is also draw or a form of draw. Disrupt is also draw. So yeah, we can cut from here. We're not going to be shuffling. Get out of here. Like these, all, all these spells are either free, one mana or two mana. So we only need to cut four more cards. Um... What's our curve look like right now? Oh, it's so low, dude. It's flying so low. Um, we have average mana cost is 1.9 with lands and 1.65 without. Okay. That's pretty, so, pretty good. We haven't done any ramp whatsoever. But we're not going to do that. Okay. Do we need 35 lands? Uh, at 35, we're going to get 2.45-ish lands per open hand, 2.38. Um, I say we're probably looking for two, a little less than that, even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so cut some lands, two lands. Okay. Now we just need two more cards cut. Um, vapor snag. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, probably. We're such a proactive deck that, like, it does make you wonder, like, what these are here for and, and whether they should just be instant speed, right? Because, instant like, instant speed? Because, like, our, our, our stuff is going to be bigger than everything else, like, most of the time. Yeah, but we need to cast, we need to cast something. Mm hmm. Like, Flame slash kill their whatever, buff the team now attack into you is really good. It's really good. Like pre combat removal is great. Uh, okay. I'm I trying mean, to know, think I, about is is Wolverine better than is it the same as Nivix Cyclops? Yeah, I don't think it's, we it's, should be removing any more creatures. It's actually more. It's this is better than Nivix Cyclops. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. Um, Artful Dodge? Or, like, Shadow Rift Slip Through Space? Or just one of these? Mm. Yeah. Or is there something else that we want to be cutting? Is... Is five haste effects. I mean, haste is so good in the stack, right? I think that's the, the thing that seems clear to me. Being able to, like, haste out a Kiln Fiend. Mm -hmm. A lot of damage. Haste out yeah. any of these big boys. I mean, I mean, honestly, any of our... Well, not our, not our critters, but, yeah. like, otherwise... Can you imagine a turn where you go like Balmor is in play, Spell Eater Wolverine lands, and you're just like reckless charge kill you? Right? Like, that's so heavy. <laughs> reckless charge turns that thing into a 7, a 14 power creature. So I think this is like almost sacrosanct. 
Maybe it's another counter spell. Um, Sapphire charm. <sighs> like, are any of these things bat like good enough on their own? I mean, well, so like it's doing all three things that we like. Yeah. It's like, yes. it's like almost better than any of these removal spells. Okay. Like, boy, really tough. This is also a removal spell, by the way. Fun fact. There is flavor text on this. Um, I, I keep, keep looking at faithless salvaging. Yeah, props. But like, but if that's going, like, if that's going, well, no, I, careful study goes before faithless salvaging. It's one mana, though. Well, I mean, all of our, everything's one mana. Like, it's such a cheap deck, right? Let's just, we'll try careful salvaging. Cool. So let's do that. Now, what were the lands that you had in the deck? We probably want command tower. We're going to want um, the snow lands. So type snow, type mountain, or no, yeah, type snow. Yeah. Um, oh, Astrolabe. Uh, interesting. Okay. Um, you had Shimmer Drift Fail, but there's Fjord, and then there's another one that just came out. Uh, that one's not Snow, right? Oh, that's right. That's right. Type Mountain, Type Island. Oh. Molten Tributary. Cool. Um, are there scry lands? Anything that scries? Yeah, Path of yeah, Ancestry yeah, is going to be great. My Prismari Campus on there. No, maybe not. Uh, this is an, uh, these cards have been very bad in my experience. Yeah. The, it's like so much mana to just. It's so much mana that, yeah, we're not, we're not hanging no. around that long. This one is interesting. Scries one when you enter and it fixes, but like. We don't want. We don't want that. We don't want that now. Um, what about Opal Palace? Uh, yeah, that's probably really good for us. Um, it's five mana to recast Balmore, though. I don't know if that is good enough. Cast it the first time it dies. Cast it the second time it comes out as a three-five. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this makes cut though. If so many pips, there's no way we can run this. No way we can run that. Um, are we running the bounce lands or the, oh, um, so the, 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 the is boiler it, works, is it boiler works. Yeah. I think so because we are running so few lands. Yeah. Um, Ash Barons is interesting because we can just play it, right? It's an untapped land. Um, What's our base look like? 60, so really, really close. So just a little bit more islands than mountains. So alt two. Thirty-three is just like a like a gut check number. I'm not actually like sold on that necessarily. Two point three three, this is like a really weird number, but like two point two five would be a rounded mm. number that I'd be comfortable with. That's a purely scientific assessment there, chat. Um, 2.24. Perfect. Look at that. Right on the money. Um, oh, that's actually we need to add. Oh, but then we can add more cards. Yeah. Hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, which ones did we cut that we didn't want to cut? Careful study I and mean, brainstorm. I would rather bring a creature back than careful study. Really? This yeah. is a lot of creatures. It's a fifth of the deck. 20%. So we will have one of these in our opening hand. Or two. One or two. So like, are we happy to have a hand that's like two lands, two creatures, three spells? Maybe. That sounds really if, good to me. If two of those cards replace themselves. Which they probably will. Two of them probably will. 
So you, what would you want to bring back in? Majoring Bully and Lightning Visionary? Mm. Was it the Sage who is a card when it dies? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I would want to bring in. But it's so small. It's not that much smaller than our Bully. I mean, it's... I don't know. It's one power smaller. Why are we trying to get a card off of this? We, we don't want to run out of gas. Yeah, we don't have any of the Monarch or anything like that in here either, because that's not what we're doing. We're probably stealing it from other people. Monarch? So, or... Yeah. See, I would prefer careful study and the other one over the over the sage but let's just bring back in careful study um the funny thing is like brainstorm is better than careful study this is actually card neutral and it sees more cards yeah we're just not abusing it the way it's meant to be abused yeah and that's fine even though you get brainstorm locked like that doesn't matter. You're still seeing cards that are going to yeah, get you I, further in. I right? think I'm, I'm not I'm worried about. Like that, if you go really, I just... brainstorm and you have like a ponder, op, portent, preordain, any of those, you can shuffle it away. Right. We've got a lot of ways to shuffle actually just built into our cantrips. That's fair. Oh, you know what? We forgot about burning profit. Scry one. Mm. That's good. That's probably better than the sage. Or. Or better than brainstorm. Ugh. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I think yeah. this is this is the one. Yeah. That effect that scries like that is crazy. Um, yep. so powerful. Well, cool. So we're at a hundred cards. We've got, uh, this land base here, which is, this is very, very mana source light, very mana source light. Um, are there any other duels that we want to have in here? Um, uh, I guess, is there any, I don't think we have any reason of playing the, well, we could play the artifact duels, the artifact duel. It, it doesn't is hurt. That, well, it does for scred. Frostbite, and that's it. Um, that's true. Swiftwater Cliffs does gain us a life. By the way, we have to change these printings for Moxfield because my filter will hate it. Um, okay. I did add Swiftwater. Um, we can cut this red source. Um, let's just try this. Let's take it into a yeah. uh, playtest here. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take us into playtest here and there. And, oh, we lost you there on, hmm, interesting. I haven't done mock field playtest with a second person before, but we will be able to hear your voice. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here, everybody. You're here. Okay. So the, the funny thing is we're just going to have to uh, put the cards down in the bottom because we are not seeing the whole, the whole thing. I wonder if this would make more sense for me to do in deck tech. Yeah, yeah, deck tech with two people. Yeah, because now we can see the hand. That's better. We'll just do it this way. So this is the one, two, three, four. Oh, you know what? Um, this this software is having a big, oh yeah, uh-oh. Um, Moxfield is bugging out really hard today. So we'll see how this works. Uh, but yeah, so we drew a card for turn already. We go turn one, monster Swiss sphere, hit for one. Next turn we draw. And we go, um, we go Balmar. Just like exposes it to removal though. Yeah, I don't think we did. I don't think we did that. I think we do Reckless Impulse. Ah, we're not going to be able to cast one of those, but that's okay. So this goes to the graveyard here. And then we untap and we get Serum Visions. So we'll go, the better one is going to be 
the flame breather. Flame breather. Oh, this. Ah, damn it. Um. Sorry. This. This is. Uh, this is what's happening right now. Is it's duplicating things? Okay. Um. Oh, and that's the real one. Ah. Uh, dang it. Okay. This is gonna go over the top. Uh, we're gonna play a island. What the? You see what's going on right now? Yeah, it's wonky as hell. What the hell? Oh man. Okay, it's uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's biting me. Okay. There was yeah. All right, this is a cool hand too, I guess. <laughs> we'll draw a card for turn. Cast Delver. Upkeep. We flip it. So this is going to be trans. Uh, nope, we can transform as F. Okay. Transform that. We're going to hit for three. And we're going to play our. Uh... Hmm. Probably. We probably want to hold these, right? But we also want protection. So we go Serum Visions, draw a card. Uh, graveyard, and then we're going to scry two. Um, don't know that we care about either of these. Right? Agreed. Bottom of the library. Okay. And we draw again. Oh, wait. That was uh, that was also we played a land that turn, right? And so now we're playing another one. Yep. Or no, this time we're going to play a mountain. And then we're going to play the Hordling Outburst. And we're going to make Goblin Tokens. Oh, please don't do it. Okay, cool. Uh, there we go. And then we draw again. It so like, it. we're... Oh, no. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, thanks, Moxfield. Really cool. I'm feeling like we're a little light on protection, you know? <sighs> Maybe... Or light on threats. Like that's that's the other way that that can go, right? Like if we're threat dense, we don't care if they kill it. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. So brainstorm. The, the one thing that we don't really want to lose is Balmore. Yeah. Land, land on top, graveyard, uh, draw, and then we go um, Serum Visions to clear the land, right? Mm. Oh, it's just going to draw it for us. Okay, well, Scry 2. Now we can put that to the bottom. This on top. And then uh, this right here. I think we just go immediately get to Actium Probe. Actually, Get Probe with the Empty the Warrens is really good. So we just hold this up. Draw yeah. this. See, now we're seeing like very creature light. Right. Which is not good. This is what I've been saying. Yeah. Hey. Hey. There it is. <laughs> um... So we go Swift Spear, uh, Portent, one, two, three. Don't think that we care about that or that. But we do want that graveyard and that's gonna trigger, trigger, trigger. And then we're going to draw the card off the top do we want to i feel like this with the empty the warrens is so good that we actually don't do that right, right? yeah I, I agree and then we just do this winged words like the the only reason we would get taxian probe there is if we're like saving the creature to win a combat like you know winning a combat or or something otherwise like it's worth so much more when we have all yeah the bodies. okay so we hit for a bunch here and the next turn yeah, like this turn we can go uh, Gitaxium Probe, draw a card, uh, play this, 
this is going to be reset and reset but we're going to get a pump 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 and then we go uh slip through space to pump 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 draw a card and then we go one two three four like we could even got we could have gotten more goblins out of this by just like uh -huh. countering our own slip through space but we want to draw a card off this so let's just play it uh and that's going to be how many three so six yeah. tokens okay um so it's the drag function that is the problem that's a lot of goblins and that's a lot of damage wow prowess gets out of hand quick doesn't it um say we just like counter something somewhere in between probably go reckless impulse cry two or uh these two i'm gonna play that out tap this forbidden friendship see already we're like damn okay so empty the warrens is insane right uh -huh. like that's almost this is almost lethal right here for somebody somebody gonna die tonight <laughs> because <laughs> yeah we get we get the we get that one and this one and then you know we like serum visions and then it's like oh god um <laughs> yeah that's super super gnarly like that probably although having two counter spells right here is pretty gross excuse me yeah i think it i think we keep this one and then uh, yeah yeah i mean so strategy wise at, if this was our actual board state you just hold on to all your, the counter spells you have yeah, forever forever <laughs> yeah it's until somebody goes to wipe your board yeah. right and this is just chilling here waiting for us we've got our counter spells we swing for a bunch draw uh this we're gonna keep for is it charm forbidden friendship Create the tokens, which is a human soldier and a dino. We're not going to drag because we're not going to do that. So that is one, one, two. All these are buffed like that. And then we go, or let's see, one, two, is it charm? Buff, 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 buff. And we're gonna loot two. Oh, that's pretty awful. Uh, -huh. uh yep. And then we like smack them for a million. Op. So we start off with an op. And we scry one. Keep that. Cast that. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I like this. Definitely, yeah. definitely bullish on this. Uh, the threat density does feel like, <sighs> yeah, it does feel like it's too low. Yep. I'm, I'm definitely feeling like this is probably too many. Agreed. Okay. No, that's, that's kind of what I was, that's kind of what I was feeling before. Um, and you know, there, there's a, there is an argument that like, even though they aren't as explosive, the value creatures like auger i think these like looking at how prowess worked in that right yeah. there it's like these are so huge so okay. so quickly right those would be the ones i'd be really interested in getting back in the deck getting back up to like that 26 is pretty good right um it's a little bit better um there's nothing else i'm really hype on including after that like auger is cool but like i don't know it doesn't get big we want no. we want big big we creature want... i mean I, I like auger because it does two things right like it it it's gonna get you it's gonna be a body that's gonna get pumped and it's going to get you value when it comes. It into will play. almost always get a spell. Yeah. Um, 
but it's not explosively big, which everything else on our creatures list is right, either because it's wide or because it's yeah tall. Um, also, that's gr like having that threat variety of like. Um, having that threat variety of sometimes it's spread out and sometimes it's stacked on one big fat thing is is pretty sweet. Yeah, agreed. Did you just pull out opt? Yep. Important. I don't like that. I kind of want our cantrips to actually do something, though, right? Like these card selection spells that just like find something else. Is that like more exciting than giving something unblockable? Especially considering the threats that we maybe have. Maybe not. Right? Yeah, maybe not. So that's kind of why I was looking at like Portent draws you a card the next turn. Um, Sleight of Hand is good. Ponder and Preordain are great. Consider again is a little bit like. Yeah, let's just test that. Very heresy. Wow. I mean, I, I th if that's what we're doing, I just think like. Yeah, yeah, OK. OK, so All like. Right. I mean, I oh, our, no, I no, no. Our... Spellweaver first. Or actually, no, G2 Amplifier first. And then draw a card. See, we don't, we want double blue so that we can hold up Shore up. Yeah. So we're just going to run out these next turn. This should find us our blue mana. And it didn't. So we're going to shuffle. Oh, nope, we're not doing that again. Uh, shuffle is S, draw. And we get flame slash. So we probably just like cast that on something and get in for some damage. Draw. Hey, there we go. Okay, so at this point, uh, could we just go slip through space? Draw a card. Okay, cool. Um, so actually, we should have waited. Oh, uh, no, no, we wouldn't have been able to cast it anyways. Cool, so we got that. Um, we hit them for some damage. Draw. Now we're hitting all of our lands, of course. Um, so we're going to hit uh, play the blue. Um, we're going to do one, two, uh, ball more. And this is now uh, seven. It's four mana. Four mana. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what we could do is we play them out. We can gush. Floating the blue. Returning these. Draw two. Ooh, that's actually really good. And then we go uh, Shadow Rift. Gonna draw another one. And then we've got our, our uh, Shore up for protection. Yeah. And then we smack them. Say we have to use it. Jeez, that's a lot of lands. Gross. Uh, but look at this. This is only two mana now. Like that. And then we have this up. Say we have to counter something because we need the cards. We're just going to counter almost anything at this point. Draw. I have a question. Yeah. Are we buffing our dudes enough that the red version of the Talarian Terror, Terror is good? Oh, yeah. Boy, you know, it's funny. When we went into this recording, I was like thinking about that. Mm -hmm. I, I originally wrote it off because I was like, oh, we're going to have a bunch of like two, three mana dudes. But like sometimes they're six mana dudes. Well, and the then, prowess or, uh, six, six power dudes. Yeah, and the more they... the more spells we cast, the cheaper it yeah. gets. Right. So if we go if we have like a monastery swift sphere um, and we go two spells then it's five power and how big does that it's seven mana isn't it i think so uh oh less uh 
Oh, it's eight. And I think the fact that it comes with trample, which we don't like, right? We don't like, care about. We don't really care. So like if, if we did cast two spells and it was a five power or say it was a six power majoring bully, then this is only two mana. Mm -hmm. I think that's good that's, enough. That's a, we need, we need a power prowess creature, which we have. It needs to be a prowess creature. So if we have four mana available to us and we have a majoring, we can go cantrip cantrip. Our majoring bully is six power. That thing is two. We'll have enough mana for it. Yeah. It's also not a card that we want to see in our opening hand, but like there's a lot of cards that we are like maybe rather not see in our opening hand. So that's fine. Um, what was the worst of the creatures that we had? I think that we should be removing not a creature. Okay. Which one would you want to cut? I don't know. Maybe one of these unblockables. Slip. Let's just do this one. Sure. sure. These are great opening hands. <laughs> Except no creatures here. Ah, yeah, I don't think this we... is pretty. This is pretty bad. This is bad. This, this is, is extra sad. Okay, this is great. This is great. Um, and in this case, we ditch this. Because we're a little behind on cards. We're going to yeah. need that scry. So bottom. Uh, so we just start off with... I think we start off with Delver. Oh, we're drawing two. Oh. That's really good. <laughs> that's awesome. So we just get to do this. And we also drew this, so this is also going to transform. Three. I'm going to play this out, and then we're going to go... Actually, before we play it, we're going to go Reckless Impulse, and we're going to get a Scry. Ooh, we do want that, don't we? For Balmore. Yeah. So we're going to leave that on top, and then exile these two. That is why. So, oh, actually, you know what we do? We, uh, this... Oh, but you know, now it's just sitting in exile. So then we play this. Graveyard. This is just waiting for us. And then we go here, cast Balmore with Spell Pierce up. Right. And then pass the turn. This goes away, then they can kill our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of sad. Um, we go sleight of hand, one, two. Ironically, we want the land. Yeah. But this is so good here. Dude, look at these spells too. Maybe this is actually a time where we don't cast this because uh, because we actually just want tokens right now. Right? Probably true. Yeah, that's we're, probably true. Yeah, this is this is what we're what we're actually trying to do. Graveyard and then. Oh, and we actually needed to scry off that, too. So we do want that. We'll keep that there. Scry off of the burning prophet. And like that right there. You know, it's some damage for sure. And we're how just many, like, mm -hmm. remind me how many instant sorceries you wanted to see in the deck. Oh, I mean, our numbers were were really good. We're uh, at forty seven. Forty seven. That's great. That's yeah. um, that's yeah, that's that's perfectly and, fine. And this is like look like right like in terms of creature type creatures we have twenty one, but in terms of threats we have twenty seven. And I think that's, you know, I think that now we've hit a really good spot where our, you know, our both our spells and our creature and our threats are high because, because we can cover up there, right? And so that tension that exists between, uh, in in a spell slinger deck like this, um, we're not targeting creatures enough to for that to be good. We have like. We have like, uh, okay. So we have the haste ones. We have the evasion ones. We have the protection ones. Yep. Those are the things that are targeting creatures. And we have a double strike. And none of those spells we want to be using on our one one. 
It's a good point. Yep. Oh, we don't have Goblin Instigator. Okay, but I think two one two one ones that aren't a spell. Two that's not a spell is not good enough. You know what? This crab does not have defender. That's really funny. <laughs> and it's a fucking sorcery. Yeah. I mean, but what are what are we what are we pulling? What are we pulling out of the list for that jank? Like I. <laughs> uh yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Uh, I love how I'm like back into here, like looking for more cards. Like Ryan, stop. This is this is how you do. Every time I message you and I'm like, hey, I'm looking to cut some things. You 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 immediately fire back with like 15 cards to add to the deck. Like fuck, fuck you. Oh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> it's not not what I asked for. Oh man. Uh, okay. Okay. So this oh. is this is okay. So where we've gotten to though is a great place. This is like ninety, probably ninety, ninety-five percent. We would want to test more, but I really like the recommendation you made and the direction you took us in in moving us towards higher creature density. And the funny thing is that when I've played is it spell slinger decks in the past. The problem that I've run into is that in Popper, the answers are better than the threats, uh, almost always, right? And that's actually not the case so much in 60 card Popper with Is It Blitz? Because Kiln Fiend, Nivik Cyclops, and Monastery Swift Spear and Delver are all like cards that see play in Modern. Okay, so right. like these are all really good. Um, but the lack of creatures in the deck, you're back in the day, it was only 12 that you were playing, um, was really like a problem when they would just like overload their removal on one of your things and then you just yeah. had nothing. So um, I've actually moved to more of what I call is it brawler, which is where we actually have like more like 16 or 20 creatures. And then and then we're able to just like keep swinging and keep pumping and everything we cast draws a card. Um, and that's where this right here is starting to look better, right? Like a quarter of the deck is creatures, really low land count because we're going to draw lots of cards. Um, and then we've got a ton of like cheap spells that are going to replace themselves or interact with our opponent while also pumping up our team to really clap them cheeks. Um, this is dope. Um, this probably, this Molten Monstrosity is probably never, probably never one red. It's probably, it's probably two or three mana most often. Yeah. I, th so the thing actually though, if you get out a Cyclops, like if you get one of our that's a good point. then it is one mana. That's a good point. Whoa. That card is insane in this deck. Like Serpentine Curve, We Dragonauts, Nivix Cyclops, Kiln Fiend, G2 Amplifier, Festival Crasher are all cards that can get huge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And that's not to mention that Reckless Charge also helps with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm on it. I like it. And yeah, I and mean, this is this is this looks awesome. Um, I'm excited. Yeah, very cool. I am, I am straight up ordering this b before I go to bed tonight. Hell so yeah, that brother! Next time we play, we can we can, we're gonna rip it out. Yeah, totally. And the other thing is, we should get you in on some uh, some spell table stuff through the tryhards, so we can play this and test it. And I can yeah. uh, I can provide you all the interface stuff for uh, making your interface look all fancy like this, uh, 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 like this. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, cool, man. Well, this has been fantastic. And uh, with these brewing sessions, one of the things I'm learning is that two minds really ensures that I get like the very we're not going to miss anything right or we're not going to miss very much right. and so i'm really happy to where we got with this and i would not have been able to do this on my own without several brewing sessions and many many play tests uh i, I mean I, f I feel like you you get two people in there and and you have the different experiences and different play styles um and 
you might, uh, and I'm saying stuff you already know, right? Like you could get to this point, but it would take you three months yeah. of thinking about it and yep. searching Scryfall and, you know, and, and, and what you'd really be doing is like talking to people and playing the deck and thinking yep. about it. But, but um, having the, <clears throat> the, the conversation about it. Yeah. Um, helps. I'm not sure a assault strobe needs to stay in here. I don't, I don't know. But think about a salt strobe it's, with like it's, almost. It's just like it's just like a cranial plating, man. It's just too much. No, no <laughs> place for that shit in here. <laughs> oh man, I just feel like like this card with like, I mean, this is classic Kiln Fiend shit, right? And the fact that I we're know. getting Trample with Balmor is like the re. A salt strobe was never playable because it never gave Trample. That's why TBR was always played. And the fact that Balmor is giving a Trample is just like moistens my loins like no this like, is this is like there's a there's a player he you, you can't deal with you know oh they, they're gone shit they have and yeah you just, you just remove just, that player because yeah you, can. you go like ponder into like a gataxian probe on top and uh like a and like a sapphire charm and you like free cast the gataxian probe you sapphire charm one of their blockers and you assault strobe and you hit them for literally a fuck billion <laughs> like i mean that's what four spells uh so kiln fiend is like 16 21 42 damage it doesn't need to be that big it literally doesn't need it to be sure makes sure well maybe you need to cast less spells what is assault strobe with just getaxian probe and assault strobe let's look at that because then we can hold up interaction right so that's uh plus four plus O twice. So that is uh, eight, uh, nine, 20 almost. 18, right? Yeah, 19. Uh, no, let's see, no, one, eight, double. Uh, yeah, yeah, eight, eight, no, 18. Six, 16, right? No, because he has one power. And then oh, that's right. An extra yeah, 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 eight. yeah, 18, 18 damage. Eight. For one mana and a Gitaxian probe. It's pretty good. And that would count for anything. We go ponder, assault, strobe, 18 damage. Boom. You're dead. That's good. I like it. I like this. <laughs> I can't wait to see you play this, man. I can't wait to die to it. It's going to be fun. <laughs> good stuff. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, Ambrose, thank you again for your time today. This was great. Um, we're going to bring you on for more uh, folks. Ambrose is a guy that lives in my local meta here, and we brew a lot of stuff together. So, um, you'll be seeing more of him and, of course, more of me. So uh, thank you, commenters, for coming and joining us today. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.